April 26, 1986, the clock struck 1.23 a.m. when reactor number four at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded, marking one of the most horrifying events in history. The force of the blast shook the entire building and the workers inside knew something had gone terribly wrong. The nuclear reaction was out of control. A worker quickly pressed the emergency shutdown button to try and stop the disaster. Instead of preventing further disaster, the control rods triggered a massive explosion. Flames erupted, and a lethal cloud of radioactive material shot into the sky. The radiation released was staggering equivalent to 400 Hiroshima bombs. The radiation released was so powerful that it turned the nearby town of Pripyat into a ghost town overnight. Trees turned red and died, and animals in the area suffered from severe radiation effects. The sky glowed with a strange, eerie light that could be seen for miles. People far away saw the glow and had no idea what had happened, what caused this tragic event. Let's understand why this Chernobyl disaster took place the reasons behind it, and understand its far-reaching impact on our world. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant, located in Pripyat, Ukraine, was built during the early 1970s. This massive complex consisted of four reactors, each capable of producing 1,000 megawatts of electricity. It was a vital source of energy, supplying around 10% of Ukraine's electricity needs. But on April 26, 1986, the plant became the site of the worst nuclear disaster in history. To understand how this disaster unfolded, Let's first explore the basic workings of a nuclear reactor. A nuclear reactor generates heat through a process called nuclear fission, where atoms are split to release energy. This heat is used to boil water, creating steam that turns turbines and generates electricity. At Chernobyl, the water needed to cool the reactor came from a nearby reservoir. Maintaining a constant flow of water was critical because if the water stopped, the reactor would overheat. To ensure the continuous flow of water, even during a power outage, the plant was equipped with backup diesel generators. However, these generators required one to two minutes to start up, creating a gap during which another power source was necessary to keep the water pumps running. The engineers believed the turbines could fill this gap, using the residual steam to generate electricity for a short time even after a reactor shut down. On that fateful night, the workers at reactor number four were testing this very system. Their goal was to reduce the reactor's power output from 1,600 megawatts to 700 megawatts. However, things quickly went wrong. The power dropped to a dangerously low 30 megawatts. This unexpected drop was caused by the accumulation of xenon 135, a byproduct that absorbed neutrons and slowed down the reaction. To counter this, the workers removed more control rods, which was against safety protocols. This action led to a sudden and rapid increase in power, causing the water to turn into steam and significantly reducing the cooling effect. The reactor core began to overheat, creating a positive feedback loop where the reaction accelerated uncontrollably. At 1.23 a.m., the workers pressed the emergency shutdown button, hoping to stop the reaction, but the control rods had graphite tips which inadvertently sped up the reaction instead of slowing it down. The reactor's power surged to an astonishing 33,000 megawatts, resulting in a massive explosion. The first blast was six to eight seconds after the emergency button was pressed. Because of this blast, the core of the reactor started melting. After two to three seconds, there was an even more powerful blast. The 1,000-ton lid on top of the structure was blown into the air the radioactive material started spreading through the atmosphere. The reason behind the second blast is said to be the graphite present in the reactor that started burning. It combusted as well. Two people were instantly killed in this blast. At 1.26 a.m., the fire alarm began ringing. Firefighters reached the spot. Initially, the firefighters didn't have an idea of what was happening there. When they reached the place, they assumed it was a normal fire, but this fire was caused due to graphite. It wasn't about to die down easily. It took more than 10 days to put out this fire. Helicopters were called in to drop thousands of tons of clay, sand, boron, and lead from the sky. These elements can reduce the spread of radiation. The immediate aftermath of the explosion was chaotic and tragic. The nearby town of Pripyat, home to the plant workers and their families, was not evacuated until 36 hours after the explosion. By then, residents had been exposed to high levels of radiation. Approximately 49,000 people were evacuated, believing they would return soon, but they never did. Initially, the Soviet government tried to keep the disaster under wraps. However, high radiation levels were detected as far away as Sweden, forcing them to admit the truth. The world was horrified by the scale of the disaster. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union, and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged, and there is speculation in Moscow that people were injured and may have died. In the weeks that followed, thousands of workers, known as liquidators, were brought in to clean up the site. These brave individuals worked in extremely dangerous conditions with minimal protection. Many later suffered from radiation sickness and other severe health problems. The reactor's intense heat caused the base to crack, threatening a third explosion. 
To prevent this, three courageous workers Alexei Ananenko, Valery Bespalov, and Boris Baranov dived into a radioactive water tank to drain it, risking their lives to save millions. They managed to open the valves and drain the water, averting another catastrophe. After the initial explosion and fire, the situation at the Chernobyl plant remained dire. The fire continued to rage and the reactor core was still producing dangerous levels of radiation. The first priority was to extinguish the fire and contain the spread of radioactive material. To do this, the Soviet government deployed helicopters to drop sand, clay, boron, and lead onto the burning reactor. These materials were intended to smother the flames and absorb some of the radiation. Despite these efforts, the fire continued to burn for 10 days. The radioactive smoke billowing from the reactor spread across large swathes of Europe. It was detected as far away as Sweden and the United Kingdom. The radioactive particles contaminated the soil, water, and air, posing severe health risks to people and wildlife. The decision to evacuate Pripyat came too late for many residents who had already been exposed to high doses of radiation. The evacuation process itself was chaotic. Residents were told to pack lightly, as they would only be away for a few days. In reality, they would never return to their homes. The streets of Pripyat, once bustling with life, became eerily silent. The town was left as it was, frozen in time, with personal belongings, toys, and everyday items scattered around. As the scale of the disaster became apparent, the Soviet government had no choice but to mobilize a massive cleanup operation. The liquidators, who were soldiers, firefighters, miners, and volunteers, were tasked with decontaminating the site. They worked tirelessly to remove debris, bury contaminated soil, and construct a temporary sarcophagus over the destroyed reactor to contain the radiation. This was extremely hazardous work, and many liquidators later developed serious health problems due to their exposure to high levels of radiation. The initial sarcophagus was built in haste and was not designed to last indefinitely. Over the years, it began to crack and leak, posing a renewed threat of radiation release. To address this, an international effort was launched to build a more permanent solution. The new safe confinement, a massive steel structure, was completed in 2019. This new enclosure is designed to contain the reactor for at least the next 100 years, providing a safer barrier against the release of radioactive materials. The Chernobyl disaster had far-reaching impacts, not just on human health, but also on the environment. The exclusion zone, a 30-kilometer radius around the plant, remains largely uninhabited. This area has, surprisingly, become a haven for wildlife. Without human interference, many animal species have returned and are thriving. Studies have shown that while some animals exhibit signs of radiation exposure, overall biodiversity has increased. The area has become a unique, if unintended, nature reserve. The health impacts of the Chernobyl disaster are still being felt today. Thousands of people have died as a result of radiation exposure, and many more suffer from chronic health issues, including cancer, thyroid disease, and cardiovascular problems. The psychological toll is also significant, with many people experiencing anxiety, depression, and trauma related to the disaster and its aftermath. In response to Chernobyl, many countries reviewed and strengthened their nuclear safety regulations. The disaster highlighted the need for robust safety protocols, better emergency preparedness, and transparent communication with the public. The World Association of Nuclear Operators, WANA, was established in 1989 to promote the safe and reliable operation of nuclear power plants worldwide. This organization facilitates the sharing of best practices and lessons learned from incidents like Chernobyl. Today, Chernobyl is a place of interest for scientists and tourists alike. Researchers continue to study the long-term effects of radiation on the environment and human health. Tourists visit the site to learn about the history of the disaster and witness the eerie, abandoned town of Pripyat. The site has become a symbol of human resilience, scientific inquiry, and the ongoing quest for safety in nuclear energy. As we look to the future, let us remember the lessons of Chernobyl and strive to ensure that such a catastrophe never happens again.